recently I was going through uh, co the tutorial of code schools regarding how to use the Chrome developer tools and while I was at the point of memory leaks and how to uh, figure out memory leaks how to how to take uh, heap snapshots and how to compare them I I thought that it was going too fast and it was uh, the tutorial was kind of sweeping a bunch of concepts under the rug and it makes sense because memory profiling is much complex and much harder than uh, you can you know teach in a single tutorial and here i just uh, wanted to dive into a little deeper and how we uh, to show how we can actually detect a a problem in our code and to pinpoint the location of uh, the leak and then uh, do kind of some some kind of analysis on the code uh, to figure out how we can solve it basically and I'm I will go through the same challenge uh, so in that challenge it was asking to uh, take a snapshot do a bunch of steps uh, tasks and then take another snapshot and then compare the two so I did it and I have two snapshots one of them is the that the snapshot and the other one is the second one basically and when we compare them we can see that we have it uh, we have a bunch of detached DOM trees uh, that have three entries basically so uh, when it comes to memory leaks most of the time especially if you are creating a single page web applications I can say as a rule of thumb 90% of the times it was it would be something related to a detached DOM tree or detached DOM node or something related to DOM. Uh, there are rare cases that you might be leaking a container object or collection object like a LRU cache or some other uh, means of storage, even the local storage may leak. But these are kind of rare and it's uh, they are kind of easier to control. Uh, on the other hand, DOM node related memory leaks might be uh, relatively harder to find out because there are a bunch of uh, things that might cause it. One of them might be a closure that might be uh, scoping over the DOM node which is, which, uh, which is making it harder to be reclaimed uh, or there might be some kind of a some kind of a DOM cache like you, you are caching a bunch of elements to be reused later but you are not kind of managing your element cache basically. Uh, so jQueries, for instance, the, the jQuery has a dollar dot uh, cache. Let's see, cache collection, which uh, which people do not uh, investigate too much. But jQuery, some of the causes of the jQuery related memory leaks are due to this cache uh, dollar dot cache being uh, kind of registered over and over again and um, because you are not unlistening events or removing event listeners uh, the cache now being not cleared kind of and one other thing might be a, another an event listener basically that's uh, or kind of a publisher subscriber subscriber pattern that's kind of uh, closing over your element and being uh, your element not uh, able to get reclaimed. So this example is kind of one of those conditions and uh, it is a rep fairly representative example. Uh, you can start from that one and go to similar ones and help yourself basically. So to figure out what item is leaking, uh, when you click on this uh, DOM tree, you can see uh, down here a bunch of retainers and let's see uh, and the the deeper you go down in the retainment tree the more abstract this uh, abstracts uh, uh, the things will get so if you go down over and over again you will reach to window that prototype that something and the, the deeper and downwards you go it will be much harder to detect uh, what's causing the leak basically. So as a rule of thumb, uh, one way to figure out uh, the leaky object is to find something that you can uh, grab onto. And luckily we have this event, dollar event variable here. Dollar event is not a 
part of the standard jQuery uh, notation. It's not not, a, not part of jQuery, so probably it's a it's a very very well created somewhere in the code. And instead of globally searching all our code base, because you might have a lot of dollar event variables in in our you know hundreds of thousands of lines of JavaScript code, uh, we need to kind of figure out how we can reach it. So first. Uh, I will kind of note down a bunch of IDs because I think that I will need them in the future. So this native element has a 954289 uh, memory address. So let's, let's just create a variable like uh, natively i memory address is, what was it, 954. To eight nine. So let's keep this in mind. And this event variable has a ha, is inside a context of ID nine five five three two one. Event context ID is nine five five three two one. So let's put it down here too. So one uh, one thing about those uh, at numbers is they they refer to memory addresses so uh, by from the memory standpoint that address refers to our whatever object is inside that address basically uh, they serve as you know pointers uh, to a more technical uh, meaning so when we find this event thing and kind of right click it we see a bunch of options and the thing that's the option is that's relevant to us is the reveal in summary view uh, option. So when we go and review that one in the summary view, I just missed it, I'll do it again. Uh, you see that this part is highlighted. And when we look at it, it's, it has the context of 955321, which we have noted down. This is the same event context ID that we are looking at. And also we have this event variable which has 955349 which is actually, um, let's see, 955349, yeah 955349 is the event variable and the list item is 954289 which we have not noted down here so uh, it's as you can see it sometimes gets harder to track things down and one thing that i do is you know take a, a you know traditional pen and paper uh, instead of you know noting down everything on the keyboard just write down a bunch of uh, addresses and a kind of mnemonics there that you know you can map those memory addresses to and create a graph of what might cause the problem basically uh, the thing is we now found this event variable and the event variable lives inside a context which is currently called as system slash context at 955321 which doesn't make too much sense to a you know to a programmer because it's the memory view of things but the good thing is our context has a closure and since we are dealing with JavaScript uh, the only scope that we have is the function scope therefore every context we create should be and has to be associated with a function and luckily our function here has a bunch of information that we can uh, we can analyze first of all it's not minified sometimes when you investigate those functions you get a minified representation and you need to figure out a way to unminify it and you know uh, kind of deal with it and the other thing is it is bound to window.calendar.display date so we can externally call it sometimes it's uh, sometimes those kind of functions are inside private scopes that you don't have external access to so you have to you know figure a way out uh, out of it uh, however luckily we are not in that situation so if we go here and check uh, window that calendar that display date we can see that we have a lovely little function here and I just copied it over here to you know 
to make it a little more easier to analyze uh, and added a bunch of syntax highlighting. Actually, my editor edit I didn't do. Uh, anyway, so uh, what this function does is, uh, aside from the parts that are not causing the leak, uh, it is creating a an event object uh, and referencing something on the DOM and then clearing the DOM by assigning events.html to uh, empty string. And the thing is, um, we also create another event variable, which this usage is not preferred, but that's another story because those variables will be hoisted on the top of the function and uh, it will be misleading in certain cases. And this piece of code a bunch of uh, has a bunch of other problems but you know the our goal in here is to just figure out why it's leaking instead of you know uh, refactoring the code basically so the reason why it's leaking is every time we call window.calendar.display date for each uh, uh, for each item in the days events uh, which we get from a from a JSON object, we kind of assign an event listener, and this event listener closes over our event object that we created right here. And when we uh, when we call this again with a different context, uh, what it will do is it will create it will it will kind of reset this events collection, and then add another event object to it. Uh, but the problem is we already have created a former event listener uh, when we call it beforehand. So when we redo it, uh, basically, um, the event object that we have created will be bound to a detached DOM node. So uh, this is a jQuery object that is wrapping around a DOM node. and. Uh, when we clear everything in the next iteration, since we had created a former event listener beforehand and we haven't removed that event listener by using window that remove remove event listener, uh, uh, this this closures context would be bound to uh, the f actual the former closures context would be bound to the former event variable, which. Uh, which is the cause of the leak. Uh, so, uh, in summary, we kind of figured out what uh, what's in the code that's causing the leak, and we from this point on we can take actions to uh, to remove the leak, basically. But that's that's you know that's more kind of a refactoring topic and. Honestly, this code needs much more than just you know figuring out uh, how to you know get rid of the leak. I would you know do a rewrite on this code because it's it's incorrect in so many levels, and I'll just leave it as a you know thought process or thought exercise for for wh whoever is listening to this video. Uh, so to sum up, well, what we did is we did we took two we did some actions before that we took a snapshot. And after completing a bunch of actions, we took another snapshot. Then we went to the comparison view, where we figured we found out a bunch of detached DOM nodes. And from those detached DOM nodes, we found an object that we can stick onto. And then we said to reveal it in the Finder. And when we revealed it in the Finder, we found that it is bound to a closure, and which was the code uh, that. We were able to isolate thanks uh, to the Google team and the Google Chrome developer tools uh, that helped us figure out what's going on. And it was really easy to find out this event variable from that point on. And then thinking about you know how this function works and uh, how this leak might happen, we verified that this event variable was leaking. And from that point on, we were able to you know fix one leak and. Uh, then do the test and ensure that uh, our fix has you know solved our memory leakage issue and that was all for now hope it was useful